Hello all and welcome my fellow metalheads. Today we plunge headfirst into what metal fillings are, why are they inside my head, and what happens to them after we lay them to rest and get those out of my mouth. All this and more today on Dental Things. But before we get started, let's find some common ground on what type of metal I'm referring to. Now this isn't your grandpa's old punk rock album that they had put on those 12 inch vinyls or anything like that, nor is it the grunge, emo, or metalcore that these gosh darn kids are headbanging to on their Spotify tracks and their Bud Apples, whatever they have these days. No, that's not the metal that we're talking about today, but it kind of follows the same symptoms as we were previously told that metal would rot our brain and also commit us to Satan. This is more of an intense version that truly will rot your brain, in a literal sense. The metal that we speak about today is called dental amalgam, or at least what makes up half of it. The word amalgam means a mixture of two or more metals, or at least in the dental terms it does. But I mean, look at the channel name. What else are we gonna talk about? So you might be thinking, well, what's wrong with mixing a couple of special rock spices together? Well, nothing much, but it comes down to not just mixing them, but how they're bound together. And what is that binder? And that's where we come to the topic of the video today, mercury. No, not that one. The one that looks like the T-1000 where it gets all liquid and goes through the doors and stretches and everything. There you go, that one. Also known as Quicksilver, this metal has a funny thing about it when it's at room temperature. It acts more like a liquid. But when it's combined with all these other metals and alloys and such, it takes on binding properties. As you see, elemental mercury is a very dense metal, and when objects which mass does not weigh more than the good old hug, it would make that which would normally sink, unsink. Odd. Apart from all the fun times that we could have with mercury, say like if it was to accidentally spill on the floor and it goes and scatters and chases everywhere, there is a toxic side to it all. When it comes to the toxic characteristics of mercury, here in my left hand, we have absorption. And over here on my right, we have vapors, which are very well known in the community to get everyone spiced up and get some headline on the news about what good old mercury is doing bad today. Tonight, breaking news. Who'd have thought that the metal in your head would have put you to bed a little bit too early? What else is breaking new? And you may have some good questions, such as, but Miller, I thought the amalgam in my teeth are hard. How am I gonna be absorbing that? Aren't I safe now because it's not liquid anymore? And I say to you, my fellow viewer, it's complicated. Truly, these days, as a community, we're exposed to near zero amount of elemental mercury, unless you're a snazzy assistant, such as myself. Although we are able to consume it at really low dosage through our seafood buffets and having a lot of tuna, we don't usually take on so much that would be detrimental to our health. Although a bigger issue comes down to the possibility of absorbing liquid mercury is when we have fresh open wounds or cuts in our hands and we're kind of fiddling around with those old broken thermometers. Now typically that's gonna be when it's in its liquid form, but when it comes to the vapors, through the process of removing a filling and putting in a good old white one in there, that's where we get a little bit more closer to our vapors portion. Without going through proper precautions, those loose particles from your metal filling that was grounded out and taken away, those loose particles of freshly grounded metal being taken out may also mix with your freshly ground brown that you're sucking down when you leave the office. Tastes like steel. On that end of the precautions where a normal office is going to continue to remove amalgams in that old time fashion with your daydreaming assistant and their trusty old HVE, or what you may know it as, is that thing that keeps sucking on my lip every time that I go in there for a cleaning. As other dental professionals may enact the use of the SMART system, also known as the Safe Mercury Amalgam Removal Technique, they make you dress up as Jim Carrey's good looking green persona. Okay slip you up into something nice and hefty as the doctor and the assistant is going to get into their heavy duty PPE and lose that Thanksgiving weight because today we're going to get our sweat on, isn't that right fellas? With all these protections in place, there's no way COVID is going to have any chance getting in here. Hey, what are you doing? Get out of here. Can't you see we're going to take out some amalgams? This guy. 
And it's not only during those times of taking it out is going to be an issue. Putting that amalgam in there at the beginning has a little bit of issues too. But for the most part, all the, the absorption opportunities are not really there after we go and bind it with all the other metals. But this is where we get to the next part. So this is when we start talking about that other hand that I put up here. The vapors. Otherwise known as mercury's body odor. This is where the claims from their many proponents saying that amalgam fillings and vapor releasing qualities comes up and gets people into heated debates about when it's released, how does it release, and what causes it to release. When it's released and inevitably inhaled, there's a funny thing that comes along with it. That's not exactly the haha -ha funny that we usually be used to, but it's an interesting fact. The term Mad Hatter comes from the fact that during the hat making process back in the day, an alternative form of mercury would be used in the sealing process. And so when it was heated, the vapors were released, would flood the workshop of the hatter's area and drive them mad. In our mouth, it only has a couple ways of being able to give off those vapors once again. Once the filling material has hardened in our mouth, it usually takes about 24 hours or so. But after that 24 hours, just the fact that our heated oral cavity and our ability to provide friction on those fillings when we chew can allow a little bit of the mercury vapor to go and release from its chambers again. This is where they devised a couple of neat little tests using UV light and the backdrop such as like a piece of paper to go and discover these vapors while the material is sitting still and when it is also heated, showing little shadows of vapors kind of rising from the material and showing up on the paper. This goes back to the whole reason why they had to put us all in those protective layers so that we can be safe and our patient can be safe too, is to keep in any of this interaction of mercury out of us and into our disposal center. And that's the topic of this video also, is how, once it's removed from our body, where does it go or how do we contain it so it doesn't go and hurt the environment or anyone else that's around us. And this comes to a couple different methods. When we suck up that material, apart from just it being spit, water, metal dust from all the particles that get ground up and everything, it goes through our tubes, down and up and through the little bends, and it goes and gets captured in this little waste trap, which is pretty much just like a sifter so that the liquids can flow through, but we can catch all the nice tooth particles and the amalgam dust so we can go and dispose of it the correct way later on. Now that's one way that we're able to get the larger pieces from getting into our water system. But there is also other things such as an amalgam separator that is also down the line to be able to catch any of those particles and keep them in the office rather than it go out into the municipal water to get drained or filtered in our nice little filtering process. So that's one way that we go and protect our community from getting any secondhand contact with this material. So for the most part, us being protected that way is pretty safe. As long as we have these different traps in each one of our offices to go and capture and properly dispose of all these materials. Sometimes during the process of actually putting in the fillings, we don't have to use every single little bit. And normally, we would just go and suction up all the loose pieces that we aren't using, or we would go and put it in an amalgam safe container. Usually this amalgam safe container is going to be an airtight sealed top the amalgam material can go and sit in there and lay rest until we go and dispose of it in the proper manner. Of course, all the offices that are following these different rules and regulations on how to protect the community and dispose of excess mercury material are doing an awesome job at keeping everyone safe. But of course, not every part of the world may even have these regulations or rules on protecting the community. If we can help this information reach the community, we can hopefully get everyone involved into making sure that all precautions are taken when it comes to these interactions with mercury so that we can keep these heavy metals out of our head. Thanks for sticking around, hope you found this informational, and we'll see you next time on Dental Things.